everybody. Welcome to my home site and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to go over a comment from Roger West about an interesting phrase that Neil A. Maxwell said that he remembers hearing. And I looked it up and found it and I want to share it with everybody. So this is the comment. I attended a CES fireside from Neil A. Maxwell at the Marriott Center in August 1995, right before my mission. I was born in 1975. It was so powerful that the phrase he said that has stuck in my mind all these years is, quote, you are the vanguard. Okay, now, vanguard in the dictionary means like the group you send out first in the battle. For a long time, uh, I've wanted... I have wanted a copy of this talk, but can never find it. I emailed BYU speeches, and they email, emailed me back that he specifically did not did not want this talk recorded or distributed, unlike all or most of his other talks. That's interesting. Anyways, I did not magically stumble on this powerful part of this talk. I don't know how he was able to get even this portion on someone's blog. Anyways, as a Gen Xer, perhaps we are the ones that are currently serving as stake presidents, bishops, elders quorum presidents, and young women's presidents, Relief Society presidents, primary presidents, etc., that are tasked with leading and shepherding the Gen Zers and millennials. I am noticing that many of the stake presidents being called now are in their 40s and early 50s, mid to late 30s in some countries. Okay, oops, what did I just do? And then down here, there were a couple more comments. Uh, one from UP, blog Daily Mormon Thoughts, posted on July 23rd, 2017. Uh, taken from talk, Days Never to be Forgotten, CES Fireside, June 4th, 1995. And then Roger West says, yes, that's the one, June 95, not August, thank you. So, I looked up Vanguard. Uh, not that I didn't believe him, I just wanted to get the exact definition for the video. Uh, this is from Miriam Webster. Number one, the group of people who are the leaders of an, of an action or movement in society, politics, art, etc. And then two, the soldiers, ships, etc. That, that are at the front of a fighting force that is moving forward. So, yeah, uh, and now <laughs> with Neil A. Maxwell in in particular, he was always a master of language and words, right? Everyone knows this about Neil A. Maxwell. He was very eloquent with his speech. Uh, it seems like he had a very wide vocabulary. And so I don't think that he just used this word casually, okay? Now, this is the blog right here. Now, remember, I put all these links in the description below in case you want to go and uh, look into it further. But here it is, okay? Elder Neil e. Maxwell compares pioneer challenges with modern times. Elder Neil e. Maxwell, 1926 to 2004, served as a 70 from 1976 to 1981, then as a member of the Quorum of the Twelve until his death from cancer in 2004. Okay, now here's an excerpt from his talk. If you are faithful, the day will come when those deserving pioneers whom you rightly praise for having overcome the adversities in their wilderness trek will instead praise you for having made your way successfully through a desert of despair, for having passed through a cultural, a cultural wilderness, and having kept the faith for having been true to the faith. And yes, you will rightly go on praising them for what they did in, in their days. Uh, but one day, they, including some of your ancestors, will praise you for having come safely home through that cultural wilderness in that desert of despair. And boy, are we in it. Okay, it continues. God bless you in these, in these your days. As those of us who love you and view you with a sense of anticipation are settled in our hearts and minds, you really are the vanguard of those whom, <clears throat> sorry, you really are the vanguard of those whom God promised to send in these the last days, of which I testify, and I encourage you to make of these days, days never to be forgotten in the history of the church. And I do so in love and as your brother, but most importantly for the purposes of this evening, I do so as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has some sense of your fu- who has some sense of your future and what you have the capacity to do. God bless you. Okay, so yeah, this is June fourth, nineteen ninety five, at a CES fireside. Now, what's interesting is that this isn't the only time that he's used this word. Okay, he I actually found another instance here. This is a talk called "Unto the Rising Generation." Uh, this is not a conference talk. Okay. Let's see, it says, this is an edited version of an address given by Elder Maxwell on the 6th of April, 1984, at the Friday evening leadership meeting associated with April General Conference. Okay, look what he says here. Uh, we are here tonight to talk about the central concerns of the kingdom, including the rising generation of the church, uh, sorry, the rising generation of church members and the need for their full conversion. We have long heard and believed that the Lord has reserved special spirits to come forth in the last days uh, of the last dispensation. Now, this is interesting because this is the, I guess, the, the first time ever I've ever heard anyone say that was, uh, I think it was Sister Nelson saying that we're in the latter part of these latter days. But I guess that Neely Maxwell said it before that. I don't know who said the phrase first, but this is Neil, Neil A. Maxwell. So again, we have long heard and believed that the Lord has reserved special spirits to come forth in the last days of the last dispensation. The church's rising generation of young men and women are part of that vanguard. There it is again. There it is again. Reserved by the Lord for this time, they must now be preserved by parents and prepared for their special moment in human history. They have been held back to come forth at this time, but now they need to be pushed forward to meet their rendezvous. So, this is two separate instances where where he says vanguard. Um, I looked it up in the scripture citation index, and it's come up several times throughout General Conference since 1942, six times, but in each instance, it's not being used in the same way that uh, Elder Maxwell used it. Although, there is something interesting that I wanted to point out here. This is from Ezra Taft Benson, October 1970 General Conference, called, uh, called Strengthening the Family. And, sorry, that was my phone. It says here, this is talking about family home evening. Uh, the Lord knew that in the last days, Satan would try to destroy the family unit. He knew that by court edict, pornography would be allowed to prosper. How grateful we should be that God inspired his prophet over half a century to go, so half a century to go, to institute the weekly home evening program. This is the vanguard meaning the home evening program, is the vanguard for getting parents to assume the responsibility of, instruct, in, of instructing their children. An increasing number of faithful saints are holding more than one family home evening a week and are adding to or deleting from the home evening manual as the Spirit di dictates. Now, this is kind of an inter interesting concept because, you know, now... Uh, you know, I guess I guess we still do family home evening. I don't hear a whole lot of talk about it, but you know, first we have this family home evening program that came out, and now we're also doing come follow me, right? So, uh, family home evening really was the vanguard or the forerunner or the first, you know, uh, force to arrive to uh, protect the family. So I just thought that that was noteworthy. So here we go. You know, here we have another instance of um, a general authority essentially talking directly to a specific generation. Now, I know that you know generations are kind of fuzzy. They're they're um, w when we're talking about Generation X and Y and Z and the Alphas and stuff. Uh, those are generations that have been defined by you know just whoever defines these things by, by the world, right? But, um, so I, I don't think anyone's really looking at it so much in that sense, but we do have 
these general authorities, they're talking, I think, in kind of somewhat broad terms, talking about these generations, uh, starting with about, you know, maybe like the, the 70s and 80s. But, well, more like the 80s, really. So we have Neil A. Maxwell now that we've added to the, to the list of general authorities that have talked about a generation or, uh, a, well, yeah, a generation. Uh, I've done a, another video uh, called Generations XYZ and President Taft Benson, where I basically collected all the different sources where a general authority has talked about a particular generation. And, and using explicit language to indicate that that generation is um, preparing for the second coming, essentially. So we have a couple, not just one, but two, from Ezra Taft Benson. And again, I'll put all these down in the, in the description below if you want to check these out. Or you can go back and you can watch this video where I cover these. So you got these two from Ezra Taft Benson. So that would have been in the 80s. We have the Becoming True Millennials, which is probably some of the most explicit language that anyone has used to identify the generation that will greet the Savior at the Second Coming. He, he uses explicit language in this. Um, there's no doubt that he's talking about the Millennials and uh, the fact that they are actually truly the Millennials, the people that are going to move into the Millennium. And then I did a video about that as well. Oops, pause that. And then we have President Nelson's um, Hope of Israel Worldwide Devotional in 2018, which was also a very uh, kind of generational uh, focused uh, devotional with some pretty incredible concepts and language being used in this one. I also did a video about that. And then... Sisters in Zion by President Eyring. This is probably the most recent example that I'm aware of, unless you guys know of others, where in this case, he's talking to the sisters, he's talking to the grandmothers, the mothers, and the granddaughters. You know, and this was in, what was it, 2020? Yeah, October 2020 General Conference. And in this case, he's talking about... Uh, their responsibility, the the women of Israel, the sisters in Zion, their responsibility to craft and create a, a society like the city of Enoch. And he repeats that idea, the city of Enoch, two times in the talk. So he, he's like really actually meaning a people like the city of Enoch, which is fascinating. Um yeah, so anyway, so that's it. That's it. So now we've had another one that we that we can add to the list from Neil A. Maxwell. If you guys know of any others, let me know. I'll do another video just like this because I think that these statements, they're, I think they're prophetic. I think that they're profound. And I think that they're important. And, you know, on, on the tracker that I'm doing, my spreadsheet, we've noticed that there has been a big uptick in talking about the rising generation. I should have pulled that up. Let me let me see if I can... Oh, this thing's in the way. No, here we go. Google Drive. Okay, go to the tracker. Okay, yeah, I still have this up. So starting in uh, 2006, let me zoom in so we can see it a little bit better. Starting in 2006 uh, onward, every single year there's at least one mention of the rising generation, and in most cases more than just once, uh, with a big uptick in 2010, and then two uh, also pretty large upticks in, uh, let's see, 2017 and 2009. But yeah. And, and then when you go down, it's just kind of sporadic. So it really, really becomes a topic of conversation beginning in 2006. Okay. So in other words, it's another way of saying that the things I think have gotten way more serious. And as you can see here, this is from the last video that I did about repent and repentance. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're completely red when it comes to repentance. So this is no joke. The, they're actually really talking about the current generations. And yes, I, I do believe many of the baby boomers and before will also be part of this. So I, I don't think that they're going to be left out because I, because I think it's so close. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we have a year, two years, five years, 10 years, but it's close enough to where I think many of us that are, uh, many of you that are listening to this today uh, are going to be around to see this happen, right? And uh, I would advise you <laughs> and encourage you to think about repentance and repenting if you have any issues that are outstanding. Um, do, do it now. Do it now because we are in the red. We are in the red. Okay, that's it for this one. So I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you have any additional information, put it in the comments below or feel free to email me. Uh, my email is in the description. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.